that you are looking at a community in which 26,000 homes surround a huge factory worth millions of dollars, giving steady employment to thousands of people. That would be visible evidence of a large and valuable industry. Manitoba has had such an industry for many years, somewhat different in makeup, but equally impressive in size, value, and usefulness. This is Manitoba's dairy industry. In this industry, thousands of farmers invest their capital and labor uh, to produce milk, which dozens of business organizations turn into food products for our own people and provide a significant margin for export. The measure of their success in this complex undertaking is a tribute to the diligence, skill, and devotion of the great number of men and women who are proud to be associated in the dairy industry of Manitoba. Milk is mankind's basic food. Milk is also the basis of a great variety of foods, from sister's ice cream cone to brother's generous helping of butter. From mother's luscious salad to father's noontime lunch. All are products of the dairy farm. Dairy farming in Manitoba is big business. 1,500 farms like this are exclusively dairy farms. Some operate with the latest in equipment and techniques. Another 25,000 farms in Manitoba are also engaged in dairy production to varying degrees with a great variety of equipment, livestock, personnel, and objectives. Manitoba has a number of dairy farms which can be fairly described as sound and efficient operations. Of the many factors that combine to make them so, undoubtedly the most important is the dairy man, the kind of man who thoroughly understands his work. Fred is one of them. Fred is well adjusted, reluctantly at the moment, to the idea of getting up at 5 a.m. every day of the week, including Sundays. Fred's objective is to be a successful dairy farmer. He planned it this way. Dairying is the kind of work that he likes. Building a top-producing dairy herd is a lifetime job. Fred has one of the best because he has good cow sense. To him, a cow is not just a piece of farm equipment. Fred and his son are the two-man team that manages this herd of 50 milk cows. Through careful planning and efficient equipment, the labor is reduced to an easy routine. Sanitation is a basic essential in the dairy business, and it begins right here in the barn. A small quantity of milk from each cow is taken for examination before the milking machine is attached. The milking procedure is no longer drudgery in the well-equipped dairy barn. A machine will do the job in about four minutes. Final stripping is carefully done, a task that takes a few seconds before the machine is disconnected and Bossy is free to relax. Records of performance are kept on each cow in this herd. Since it takes three years to grow a milk cow, Fred has learned the importance of records. Two men working two hours with machines can milk 50 cows. It's all a matter of planning and efficiency. Efficiency is carried through to the cooling and handling of milk in bulk, 
an extra safeguard in maintaining quality. Getting the milk to market is now a tank truck operation aimed at achieving still more efficiency. That word efficiency is the heart of the dairyman's problems today. Efficiency every step of the way. Efficiency in dairy production begins with the cow. Of equal importance is the dairyman's ability to breed and select enough cows of outstanding performance to form an efficient herd. Since heredity is a dominant factor in breeding, the quality of the herd's sire is most important. A good bull is half the herd. Whether the breed selected is Jersey, Ayrshire, Guernsey, Brown Swiss, or Holstein, efficient cows have one thing in common, their ability to turn large quantities of roughage into large quantities of milk. Fresh green pastures are the ideal source of feed for the dairy herd, since they're rich in protein, high in vitamins, highly digestible, and extremely palatable. In areas primarily devoted to cereal crops, the cultivated pasture sown to a legume such as alfalfa will pay off in high production for the grazing herd. Alfalfa, corn, and other crops provide excellent silage for winter use, which can be taken off most efficiently by the forage harvester. The labor of feeding a herd is greatly reduced when the silage is stored in a horizontal silo close to the dairy barn. The harvesting of dry hay crops, whether native or sown, is no longer a heavy task to the man with a hydraulic stacker. Others may prefer the compact product of one of the many types of hay balers now available. Feeding of grains is essential because cows producing a high volume of milk can't eat enough of the bulkier feeds to obtain all the nutrients they require. Oats, barley, or wheat, crushed to make them more easily digested, provide the extra nutrients needed in a concentrated form. High protein supplements of an oilseed meal may be added to obtain peak production and are essential when feeding low-quality roughage. Extra requirements of a good quality diet for the dairy herd can usually be supplied by cobalt iodized salt and a balanced mineral mixture. Of utmost importance to the dairy herd is an unlimited supply of fresh, clean water, all the water they want to drink whenever they want it. Housing planned for efficiency in handling the dairy herd was the basic idea when this barn was built. It represents a capital investment of over $30,000. The wide center alley gives easy access and the built-in barn cleaner helps to take the drudgery out of daily chores. The stanchions were cast into place when the concrete floor was poured. Each cow is provided with a water bowl. Hay from the spacious loft above drops to the feeding alleys to be moved only a few feet to the animals. Each cow gets her ration of grain while she's waiting to be milked. Curb service is something they appreciate. Machines speed the task of milking the herd every morning and evening, but first the equipment is sterilized, then sterilized again as it goes down the line from cow to cow. Apart from the barn is the milk house, also clean and bright, where containers, cans, and bulk tank are kept spotless and sterile. Pickup by bulk tanker is available to farms equipped for it within a certain radius of Winnipeg. The driver of each tank truck is also a trained grader. 
He must test the milk at each pickup point before he pumps it aboard. Today, the tanker service represents the latest step. Nevertheless, the milk can is still a well-used item that carries its share of milk to city markets. Processing plants, which cater to the needs of city markets, must handle each day a large volume of fluid milk. Efficiency in plants like this is achieved mainly through mechanization, which requires a large investment in special equipment. The machines and tanks and pumps and pipes must also be designed to maintain the highest degree of sanitation. And the people who work here are constantly aware that they're handling a perishable food. Laboratory technicians run continuous checks to maintain the quality of the output. Once the pasteurized milk starts on its way through the filling machines, the housewife can be sure that it's pure and wholesome. Giving the housewife what she wants, how and when she wants it, is, after all, the primary purpose of the dairy industry. Over half the milk produced in Manitoba goes into butter production. Every can of cream that goes to market must pass inspection by the grader, and one of his routine tasks is to taste a sample. Tests are made of every shipment to determine butterfat content and grade, for this establishes the price paid to the dairy farmer. Churns of stainless steel are replacing older types. Their seamless construction makes them ever so much easier to sterilize. One fill of cream in a churn of this size makes a ton of butter, a clean and wholesome golden heap of nourishment. Equipped for maximum efficiency and aimed at high volume production, this plant can cut and wrap 27,000 pounds of butter a day, each print clearly marked with government grade and weight. Efficiency such as this assures a steady supply. The first of its kind in Manitoba, this continuous churn is something of a maze of vats and pipes and pumps. But cream that starts in one end comes out the other as butter in one uninterrupted operation. 
cheese production in Manitoba depends largely on the surplus of fluid milk, which occurs when pastures are lush in the early summer. It is, however, an important means of using that summer surplus and constitutes a worthwhile addition to our list of dairy products. Here again, efficiency is a dominant factor in production, which is carried on under conditions approved for the manufacture of all our dairy foods. The objective is cheddar cheese from wholesome, high-quality milk, a product in wide and constant demand. Curing under controlled conditions is essential for uniform quality. The manufacture of ice cream is today an important branch of Manitoba's dairy industry. Freezers of modern design and high output set the pace for efficiency in production. This one, for instance, produces 600 gallons of ice cream an hour. Getting all that ice cream to market presents some problems in packaging, neatly solved by the latest in machinery. Holding the packages for shipment requires refrigeration that will go as low as 20 degrees below zero. Ice cream on a stick has long been a popular item, and that popularity creates a demand that requires equipment for mass production. Conveyor belts carry the loaded molds through a brine tank, chilled to 30 below. The end result is bound to please youngsters of every age. The manufacture of powdered milk requires the sort of plant and equipment which might easily be mistaken for a complex chemical factory. Into one end of the line goes fresh Manitoba milk to follow a route through pumps and pipes and filters to the evaporator, finally to end up as powder in a bag. It is, however, a bag full of the best in concentrated nourishing food destined for a great variety of uses. And so you see, there are a great many foods to choose from. However, I would like you to keep this thought in mind. Most of your recipes specify dairy products of one kind or another because they're the best of foods for people of all ages.